In this video and the next video, we're going to look at how you can use RSpec along with SharpCap and any other camera control software. And I'll show you some valuable tips to help you capture great spectra. We're going to start by looking at how to capture spectra using a single shot static image camera. Your camera could be a DSLR or it could be a cooled Fitz camera, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're using SharpCap today, or maybe you've got another camera control program like Maxim DL or Nebulosity. You'll continue to use whatever camera control program you're using, even when you're capturing spectra. Okay, just a quick side note. If you're using a Canon DSLR, you should take a look at a software package called Backyard EOS. It's a great program for capturing astronomical images on your DSLR, and they have a version for Nikon cameras too. You can find more details on their site, which has a two-hour tutorial video by the author. Also for DSLRs, you could use Canon's own camera control software, EOS Utility. It's free, and although it's not as sophisticated as the Backyard program, it too eliminates the need for you to actually touch your camera during an imaging session. Okay, to get started, the most common way to process an image you've saved from your camera control software is to go to RSpec's Image File tab and click the Open button, here, like this. Notice RSpec shows the file name in the title bar. And if you have a computer available while you're capturing images, RSpec can automatically open each image when your camera control program saves it. You may be already familiar with this Imaging Tab's Auto Open feature. If you put a check mark here, then every time a new file appears in a shared folder, RSpec will automatically open it. This means that live, under the stars, you can quickly look at each image as you capture it. This immediate feedback is the best way to point your camera at your target and then determine the best camera settings for your exposure and focus. The key concept here with the auto open feature is that RSpec and your camera control software will both use the same folder for images. Your camera control program saves a new image to the folder, and then RSpec notices the new image and opens it without you doing anything. RSpec's auto open feature works with whatever camera control software you're using. In this video, I'm going to use SharpCap to control my camera. Of course, minor details differ between SharpCap and other control software, but the workflow is basically the same. We need to do a one-time setup to make sure that RSpec and your camera control software both are using the same folder for images. Since I'm using SharpCap in this video, we need to know where SharpCap is saving its files. Well, let's open SharpCap. So first, before I go any further, I want to say a few words about SharpCap. It's an absolutely wonderful program. Without a doubt, it's one of the best designed and most user-friendly programs I've ever come across. I have an enormous respect for its author, Robin Glover. He's done a fantastic job with it. There's a free version of SharpCap, and there's an inexpensive paid version. I always try to support authors of freeware by purchasing their pro versions if I can. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't already done so, upgrade to his pro version. It's just 15 US dollars. He deserves it, and you'll find that the features in the pro version can be very helpful. Personally, as a programmer, I've never wanted to write a camera control program because that would be like reinventing a wheel. And fortunately for all of us, there's no need to because Robin has built a wonderful wheel for us all. One of the strengths of SharpCap is that it supports so many different cameras. On its website, we can see this list of the cameras it supports. It's quite likely that your camera is on the list, especially because SharpCap supports ASCOM cameras. Our spec has always controlled DirectX video cameras, but as we'll see in the next video, SharpCap talks to many, many more video cameras as well as to static imaging cameras. So if you're new to SharpCap, you'll find the software easy to learn. In this video, I'll use a handful of features that you need to know, but there's many more that you can read about. Okay, now that that's out of the way, 
No, it wasn't a paid advertisement. I just believe in recognizing and acknowledging excellence when I see it, especially when it's in my own field. So <laughs> let's remember why we started SharpCap a minute ago. We're here because we need to know where SharpCap is saving files. That's the folder that RSpec's auto open tool will monitor for new files. Here in SharpCap, I'll click on the file and then SharpCap settings. Then on the File Names tab, here's where you specify the folder to which SharpCap will save files. Shown here is the default path. You can change it if you wish. So once RSpec knows the path to this shared folder, it can watch that folder for new images. So let's move this path over into RSpec. First, I'll close this SharpCap Settings window. And now I'll flip back to RSpec and under Auto Open, I'll click on this configuration gear. Here's where you tell RSpec what folder the Auto Open feature should watch for new files. We just have to click on this button, and RSpec looks up the path in SharpCap and fills it in here. There. Now RSpec will watch for new files in that folder. So now back in SharpCap, let's open a camera. I'll click Cameras here. So this is a list of all the cameras that are currently available in SharpCap. If your camera isn't on this list, you'll need to install the camera's drivers, which you can download from the camera manufacturer's site. You can get help on that from the SharpCap manual in their forum. Sometimes your camera may appear on this list more than once. For example, my ZWO camera appears both here and here. If you're not sure which of the two to select, use the highest one in the list. That's because SharpCap tries to put the cameras at the top of the list that it has the best control over. So I'll choose this ZWO, the one near to the top. Aha! There's the live video stream from my camera. Now, of course, if you're using a static image camera, there's no problem here, but there won't be a stream or image until you click the SharpCap Capture or Snapshot buttons. But because I'm using a video camera, you can see the frame counter advancing here. Now, this really, really is a live stream from my ASI-178. But, true confession here, this isn't really a live astronomical spectrum. The camera isn't on my telescope. It's sitting right next to me on my lab bench here in my office. We're looking at a synthesized spectrum. In other words, this spectrum is a fake. Okay, so this is the right time for you to ask me, Hey Tom, you say it's so easy to capture spectra with RSpec? Why aren't you at your telescope under the skies making this tutorial video? And my answer to that would be this screen. Seattle, where I live, is the cloudiest city in the U.S. Getting clear skies is a real challenge, especially in the fall, winter, and spring. And in the summer? Well, it doesn't really get dark here until close to midnight. You know, it takes me about two hours to produce each finished minute of videos like the one you're watching now. If I had to produce this video at my telescope, it would add a lot more time. So I hope you'll forgive me. To save time and sleep and perhaps my marriage, I'll use the synthesized spectrum here. This synthesized spectrum isn't a particularly good fake. Real spectra look much better. They're sharper when they're focused well, more compact, and their profile graph is much more interesting than what we'll see in a moment. But this spectrum will work well for what we need to cover here. As I pointed out, we know the camera is connected and that it's working because this frame counter is clicking along. So at this point, there are a few configuration issues that we need to look at. Over here on the camera control panel, first, if you've got a color camera like mine, make sure this color field says RGB 24. Why? Because if you don't, your camera's bare filter will cause your images to have a checkerboard pattern like this one. And that checkerboard will cause your profile curve to have this wild noisy oscillation. So no matter what camera control software you're using, Make sure the Bayer filter pattern is set properly. And also, let's change the SharpCap output format to an image file type rather than a video file. 
I suggest PNG, but other formats will usually work too. Now, with these two controls down here, I can easily adjust exposure and gain for the best image. I can change the gain. I can change the exposure time. In fact, when you first turn on your camera on your telescope, you probably won't see a spectrum as easily as we just did. You'll need to experiment with these controls until you see something. I suggest you experiment first without the star analyzer. Then once you've got things set up to see stars, add the star analyzer and increase your gain or exposure time until you see your spectrum. And we'll discuss more about these controls in the next video. So here I want to say one quick thing about screen layouts in Windows. When I run more than one program at a time on my computer, if I need to go back and forth between the two, I often start out by unmaximizing both programs by clicking this icon. And then I rearrange the programs, like you see here, so I can always see a part of both programs, regardless of which one is in front, because there's always a part of the other peeking out from behind on the side. This layout makes it easy for me to switch from one program to the other, since I can just click on it. Also, of course, you can use the Alt-Tab to switch programs, or even just click on the taskbar icons. Okay, now let's actually capture some data. I'll start out in RSpec. In the Auto Open New Files field, I'll add a check mark. And now I'm going to switch to SharpCap. Every time I click on the snapshot button, SharpCap captures an image and it shows up in RSpec. Now I'm going to change the gain and click snapshot again and do that several times, a typical workflow. Every time I click on snapshot, as I said, RSpec picks up the image. I'll change the gain one last time here and click on snapshot. And this time, keep your eye in RSpec and watch that image show up there like that. SharpCap saved an image to this file, and RSpec loaded it over here. So you get immediate feedback on your camera settings so that you can immediately see their impact on your spectrum itself. So now we can process the spectrum in RSpec using all of our familiar tools, using the orange capture lines to select the spectrum, examine the resulting profile, zoom, calibrate, etc. It's all available. Now, if for some reason we want to see the actual files that SharpCap saved into the shared folder, we can either click on this link in SharpCap or on this icon in RSpec. In both cases, the folder opens in the Windows File Explorer. So there are the files SharpCap created when I click the snapshot button. Now, by the way, see all those camera settings files? RSpec ignores them. As you'll see if you open one, SharpCap saved your camera settings in them, but if you're not using them, you can keep this folder a little bit less cluttered by turning them off. You do that over in SharpCap, under the file SharpCap settings. I'll go to the saving tab and remove this check mark. All right, now suppose later that night, or next week, next morning, even next year, you want to look through these files in RSpec. There may be a lot of files, and it would be clumsy and time-consuming to open each of them one by one with RSpec's open button. Now, one way to view these files is simply drag and drop them from the File Explorer into RSpec. I'll open the Auto Open folder again, and then drag each one into RSpec one at a time. But there's another neat way to do this that you may not know about. It's a great way to quickly go through a lot of images. Under Tools, click Preview Images. And now I'll click this button to pull in the name of the Auto Open folder. When I click Refresh List, it shows me all of the files in that folder. I'm going to set here, we just want to look at PNG files. Make sure this preview box has a check mark. Now, each time you move to a new file in this list, RSpec immediately opens it. You can see the file name changing here in the title bar, and you can use your mouse on these arrows to quickly step through the files one at a time. This is a great way to go through a lot of files, previewing them for quality by looking at the, the profile curve in RSpec. And if you ever want to convert these images that have a check mark into a video, 
you can use this part of the screen to do that. Once you have a video, you can play in an RSpec, and if your tracking is good, stack them with RSpec's averaging checkbox. Okay, so at this point, if you're under the stars, it would be a good time to fine tune your focus and exposure. It's a familiar process of trial and error. Having the spectrum come into RSpec means that you can tune your setup for the best possible spectrum. More on that in the next video. Okay, now we've seen how capturing single images from your camera control software to RSpec works. It may seem like a lot of steps, but it's really only a few clicks. So back in SharpCap, it's a good idea here to save your camera control panel settings. Click on this button, the Save As button, and give the settings a name, and then tomorrow or next week, whenever, you can select that setting and use this Load button on it. It's nice to be able to come back to the exact same settings you used earlier, saving you time and hassle. So that's all for this video. We've seen how you can process images from whatever camera control software you're using into RSpec automatically. In the next video, I'll continue showing you how to view a live SharpCap video stream in RSpec. And I'll show you some tips on getting good images by adjusting your camera in real time. See you then.